Okay, in our video series on neurology lectures, in this video, we'll be talking about encephalitis. We'll discuss that what is encephalitis, what is the presentation and what are the causes of encephalitis. We'll discuss that how do you treat encephalitis. First of all, what is encephalitis? Encephalitis is basically infection of the brain parenchyma with the evidence of neurological dysfunction. First of all, there is infection of the brain parenchyma, brain tissue, and there is evidence of neurological dysfunctions. There are neurological deficits present with it. Usually the patients of encephalitis, when they present to you, they have a history of an infectious prodrome. They will give you a history of any infection, increased temperature, rash, lymphadenopathy, of being sick a few days ago. And then after that, after that infectious prodrome, they develop odd behavior. Their attendants would tell you that the patient got odd behavior and all of a sudden his condition exacerbated. He had decreased consciousness. He developed focal neurological deficits. So after an infectious prodrome, encephalitis appears. It means that that viral illness resulted in encephalitis. What are the signs and symptoms of encephalitis? Patients who have encephalitis, inflammation of the brain have bizarre encephalopathic behavior. They're altered in time, place, and person. It makes sense. Since the brain is inflamed, how can they think properly? The GCS is down most of the time. Patients are usually in coma. They have fever. They have a headache. They have focal neurological deficits. Usually there will be history of travel or animal bite or any infection. Look for the source of infection from where that virus, from where that bug entered the body and now has settled in the brain. Patient would have seizures. So these are all the signs and symptoms with which a patient of encephalitis present to you. If the infectious prodrome is absent, and patient has developed a deep comatose state or altered mental status, then you should consider the diagnosis of encephalopathy. Encephalitis is infection of the brain. Encephalopathy can be due to metabolic causes. If the infectious prodrome is not there, you should consider encephalopathy in your differentials as well. You should consider hypoglycemia, hepatic encephalopathy, DKA, drugs, SLE, hypoxic brain injury as a cause of this altered behavior because encephalitis is infection of the brain and encephalopathy occurs due to metabolic causes. The metabolic causes disturb the brain that results in encephalopathy. So if the infectious prodrome is absent, look for these differentials as well. Causes of encephalitis can be divided into two categories, viral illness and non-viral illnesses. Viral illnesses most commonly include herpes simplex 1 virus. It is common in all ages and all seasons. And it is a very important common cause of encephalitis. Varicella zoster virus favors elderly, CMV, Epstein-Barr virus, Arbo virus, West Nile virus, enteroviruses. These also can cause encephalitis. Non-viral causes of encephalitis include TB, malaria, listeria, Lyme, cryptococcus, in which TB and malaria are important ones. Now, investigations that you need to do in a patient of encephalitis include blood cultures. Look for the source of infection. Do malarial film to look for malaria. If the malaria is endemic in your area, cerebral malaria can present like bizarre altered behavior with an infectious prodrome. Serum for viral PCR, viruses, HSV virus is the most common cause. Do lumbar puncture and in lumbar puncture, most often what you would see would be lymphocytic pleocytosis and lymphocytic pleocytosis is seen in viral infections. So go for PCR of HSV, VZV, CMV, EBV, HIV, enteroviruses, West Nile viruses. You can diagnose the cause of uh, encephalitis, the exact virus can now be diagnosed. But most often it's the HSV which causes it and HSV is the one of which PCR is usually performed. You can also go for serology against these viruses, antibodies against these viruses can be detected. Contrast enhanced CT scan should be done and contrast enhanced CT scan shows bilateral temporal lobe involvement if HSV is the cause. HSV commonly causes encephalitis and it involves bilateral temporal lobes. So if you receive a CT scan like this, you see the temporal lobes are involved. This temporal lobe involvement occurs in herpes simplex virus encephalitis.
And if the patient is allergic to contrast, then you can go for MRI. EEG is also helpful in confirming the diagnosis, but it does not confirm the cause. EEG will only tell you brain waves will show that patient is in a deep comatose state and altered state, but they won't tell you the cause. Autoimmune encephalitis is a rare cause of encephalitis, but you should have in your mind it as a cause of encephalitis in some cases. Coming to the treatment of encephalitis, treatment of encephalitis is very, very important. Untreated encephalitis has a mortality of up to 70%. 70% cases, if they are not treated in time, will result in death of the patient. So the sooner, the better. Treat the patient, diagnose the patient as early as possible. Aim to start a cyclovir within 30 minutes of patient arriving as an empiric therapy for herpes simplex virus. As I said, that herpes simplex virus is one of the very important cause of encephalitis and a very commonly found agent that results in encephalitis. So empiric therapy must be started with a cyclovir the sooner the better to protect the patient from death. So dose can be 10 mg per kg 8 hourly IV over 1 hour and 14 days therapy is given in normal individuals. And those patients who are immunocompromised 21 day therapy is required. So the treatment of encephalitis is mainly supportive and the thing we can treat is herpes simplex virus. If you suspect cytomegalovirus, you can start gencyclovir with or without foscarnet. Symptomatic therapy is given with it. Phenytoin is given if the patient develops seizures. In summary, we talked about what is encephalitis and it usually precedes an infectious prodrome. Symptoms include bizarre encephalopathic behavior, decreased GCS and coma. If infectious prodrome is absent, suspect encephalopathy. Viral causes and non-viral causes, HSV being the common one, TB and malaria can also be treated if you suspect them. Blood culture, lumbar punctures, contrast-enhanced CT scan will show uh, bilateral temporal involvement in HSV. Treatment include HSV treatment with acyclovir, and if it is TB, go for ripe therapy. If it is malaria, treat for malaria. And if you suspect CMV, then start gencyclovir. So it was all about encephalitis. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on neurology and emergency medicine. The link of those videos are given in the description below. Thank you very much.